Hello, thank you for joining our Michael from Spectro. And today I would like to share with you more details about the Open Telemetry Collector. Today we're actually going to focus on the processor part of the collector. And in front of you, as you can see, we have um, kind of a diagram of how the, the Open Telemetry Collector is structured. So you can see that we have the Open Telemetry SDK. That's what's producing telemetry data. And the telemetry data can consist on logs and metrics and traces. And all of this data need to be sent somewhere. That would be the Open Telemetry Collector. The Open Telemetry Collector in general is responsible on ingesting the data, receiving the data, and then exporting it to a destination. Could be some vendor, could be some database. Those are the two main responsibilities. For that, you can see in the two edges of the Open Telemetry Collector, we have the receiver and we have the exporters. The receivers, those are what ingesting the data. This is what we are defining how we are going to send the data. Whether the data is going to be sent in Open Telemetry Protocol, the OTLP, maybe we're using Jaeger clients, so we need to receive the data in Jaeger. Maybe we're sending the data over HTTP or gRPC. So all of those configuration we are going to define in the receiver. Those we usually define as we need. If we're sending the data in OTLP, we need an OTLP receiver. Same goes to the exporter phase. The exporter phase, we are defining it as we need. If we're exporting the data to Elasticsearch, we need to use the Elasticsearch exporter. If we're exporting the data to uh, Kafka, we need to have Kafka exporter. So we use the exporters as we need. The interesting area, and this is the area where I want us to explore because there is more possibilities than just what we need. It's also what we can do. What other things we may have in the collector, other capabilities that we have in the collector that we may have missed. So the collector phase, the, the processor phase is actually when we, between the receiver and the exporter, we are taking the data and we are running it through a data pipeline that allows us to alter the data, enrich the data, extract more things from the data, and maybe even throw it away. So in the example before you, you can see that I have defined um, several processors to each telemetry type. So each telemetry type, the metrics, logs, and traces has its own pipeline. You can do different things in the data pipeline with different telemetry data. And that makes sense because they are different, so we want to treat them differently. <clears throat> in the um, metric, you see that I define metrics generation, um, then uh, collimative to delta. So two processors there, in the logs I did batch and reduction, in the trace I did sample, Kubernetes resource and reduction. So we have a bunch of those. So the processors allows us to, again, change the data. We have um, all the processors available to us and I do the liberty to kind of group them by some categories. Uh, this is no official category, this is how I see things. Um, so you may see it in, in different way. Um, the idea here is to kind of say different processors have different um, um, capabilities. They're trying to achieve different things. So I um, took it and broke it down into different categories. The first category is the data flow. So basically what I'm trying to say here is we're ingesting the data. So we may want to change the flow of the data. We may want to omit some data. The first one is the filter processor. The filter processors allow us to filter out different, uh, uh, um, different data types or different data values. The best, case thing, the best thing that I can think of is that you're ingesting logs, a lot of logs in different verbosity. You have errors, you have uh, info, and you may even have debug. So you can have in your production environment all the logs sent to the collector, even in the in variables or debug uh, severity, all of them are arriving to the collector. And But then the collector doesn't want to send everything to your log vendor that would be very costly and don't need the, uh, so much data. So I would filter out anything below info. 
So info, warning, error, critical, fatal, all of those will be sent out, but the debug ones and the verbose one would be omitted. And if I want, I in a change, a simple change of the configuration, I can just go ahead and change that and keep the data flowing. And if it does flow, it goes to the exporter and eventually to its destination. So this is kind of a good example how filter is controlling the data flow. Group by attribute in group by traces, um, those allow us to group traces together, uh, also logs and metrics uh, in the group by attribute. This is allowing us to kind of group together uh, a bunch of spans and addressing them as a, as a group and not as a single uh, uh, trace. And routing allows us to diverse, to change the uh, direction of a pipeline. You can have multiple pipeline flow traces, so you can jump from one, one to another, again, based on, on the data. So this is data flow, how we can alter the data and, and, and change it. The next section, the next category is sampling. Sampling is um, somewhat similar to filters. Um, this is kind of telling us, hey, let's take a look at the data itself and decide whether we want to sample that or not. So you can do something like uh, probabilistic sampling, saying I want to collect 10% out of all, all, all of my traffic. So looking at 10% is different than a filter. Filter is looking per specific values, regex, things of that sort. And um, here we, we have different conditions. Um, so that is sampling, which is very, very common as open telemetry can be very, very um, extensive in the amount of data it generates. The third category, that's random environment. This is something that you should definitely use. Um, this is allowing you to collect data about the environment that you are running in. You have three different processors. You have the Kubernetes detector resource, you have the detector resource, and you have the resource. Um, Kubernetes uh, uh, detector is going to detect um, think about the metadata, about the environment that you're running in that is specific to, the, to Kubernetes. For instance, you could have uh, um, the pod ID that you're currently running in. So you can add that to your logs, metrics, and traces. So you just go ahead and add this processor and the processor, any data that passed through it is going to add those resources. Detectors, um, those are other things like the collecting the environment that you're running in, whether it's staging or production. Maybe in AWS, you can collect in which region or availability zone you're running it. So um, basically, you can add those. A resource uh, processor, that's allowing you to add things manually and not automatically, unlike the uh, uh, Kubernetes and detector. Data control is actually allowing you um, to change the data itself. So data flow and sampling allows you to omit all of the data, right? I'm saying, I don't want to have this trace. I don't want to have this span. Uh, remove this log entry as a whole. But in data control, I can go into the span itself and I can change the data. I can change a specific attribute. And this is important because um, maybe there is something wrong with the data. Maybe I want to enrich the data to add more Thing. So I can remove data, I can add the data, I can alter the data. The reduction processor is very useful for PII and GDPR uh, purposes. So maybe I want to hash all of the email addresses, things like that. So this is allowing us to kind of control the data more from a data privacy perspective. The transformation group, um, those allow us to take data and change it in different ways. So you have the, the transformation process or the general one, which is kind of a, um, one thing that you can alter the data in different ways uh, um, in, in general, and you have more specifics, uh, um, more specific processors that allow you to do more specific things. So one of the things is span metrics. So that allowing you to observe the spans that you're ingesting and extract metrics from them. So you don't need to send metrics to the collector, you can uh, in, infer the metrics from the spans. Meaning that if you're taking all of the HTTP spans, so you can take from that how much uh, API calls you're getting per service, per route, 
the HTTP status code, all of those things. You could do um, metrics gener generation. Metrics generation is a way to extract one metric from another. So let's say that you have two metrics. You have the um, total memory provision for a, for a specific application, and you have the uh, um, actually the actual usage. So you have two absolute uh, numbers. Let's say one gigabyte and 100 megabytes, and now you want to have a ratio between them. You have to you want to have what percentage of utilization. So you need to divide uh, the total by the usage, and you can do that from the metric generation, kind of taking two metrics and combining into one new metric. And then and cumulative to delta, delta to rate. Those are kind of converting different metrics type into different ones. Um, the next category I call others because they are just different. So you have the schema, the schema, the open telemetry schema, the specification, the semantic convention is changing. You may get different version of the semantic convention. This is going to help you to um, kind of narrow the gap between them and transform the uh, from one schema to another. And the graph is allowing you to generate uh, um, kind of a graph view of your services using the processor. Um, another one is the core one. So all the, the uh, um, categories above the core, all of those are in the open telemetry uh, repository of the contrib, meaning those are not in the core of the collector. Um, in the core of the collector, you would find two. You would find the batch, which is, of course, allowing you to do batches, which is very important to help the, uh, um, the collector to be performant. And a, mem a memory limiter, this is to limit the memory so you won't have out of memory exceptions. So this is um, all the different options that you, you have. Um, you can see in the diagram uh, that you can create, of course, a pipeline of processor. One processor can speak with another, um, which is important to think about the order, right? If you are going to sample 10% out of your traces, first sample, remove everything that you're not going to ingest, and then do the, the other processing, that of course is going to save you first processing and then throwing it away. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you very much.